Welcome to this week's shooting show. This week we're in Southern Ireland. We're being hosted by Norman Mulvaney of Irish Safaris and we're looking for Seeker. Hope you enjoy it. come down to um, County Wicklow, invitation really, of Norman, he spoke to me quite a few times about coming down to have a look at the operation he's got out, out here and one of my favourite deer, I probably the, I'm always sort of torn between Roe and Seeker deer as my favourite and I like them both equally but, but, but for, for different reasons. Seeker, there's something about Seeker stags in particular, that just got that kind of attitude, that kind of aggressive look about them and I just think there's something pretty special about, you know, Seeker stag black muscular kind of thick cover difficult deer to stalk i think that's one of the reasons i like them i don't like easy stalking i don't want to go out and be whacking deer every time i go out i want to have to work for my deer i want it to be a challenge and i think with seeker in this sort of situation um, it, it are challenging to say the least we, we, we're relatively early season we're in the stag season the season opens in september um, and I didn't really want to come down when they're in the thick of the rut. I mean, obviously, Norm's going to be busy with a lot of clients. Uh, just wanted to come down and have a look at, you know, early season. Quite frankly, we didn't expect the weather. Um, it's absolutely glorious. The, the summer we've had this year just seems to be going on and on and on. And very much like Ayrshire, they've had very little rain here. But this is Ireland. It rains all the time in Ireland. Um, but it's very dry, very warm. Most of the days we've had 18 degrees. And it's interesting because I've seen the same sort of habit with the woodland red deer that we've got in that you really only get a very, very brief period in the morning and at night to actually see them because they're feeding all night. The vegetation is lush. There's bags of food available for them. There's no pressure on them. They're feeding all night when it's cool. And by the time it starts to come light, I mean, they're already walking in and it's the same at night. Then they're often not coming out till after dark. So it's really been quite tricky. Good optics come into their home, both binoculars and, 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 uh, and obviously scopes here because, uh, you, you know, you need that to be able to see the deer. But anyway, we, we got there in the end. We're out again later on this evening, so we'll, uh, we'll have another look around and, and see what happens. Okay, for the first morning, um, Seeker tend to be behave a little bit out, like our Ayrshire Reds really, first light and last light. Um, so we elected to get off really early before first light, um, take up a position really where we were overlooking some scrubby meadow down below us, which kind of oozed deer. Plan being we would just wait, um, hopefully get deer moving as the light came up uh, before they finally disappeared into thick cover. I want you to sit up on the sticks in a bit. Yeah. 
That's a hind. The one bit of excitement was Norman stepping on a wasp's nest, uh, which <laughs> quite interesting. It was a big wasp nest as well. He didn't kind of realise, but the guy behind him, which was me, ended up walking right through the middle of it. Um, so he kind of exited stage left fairly sharply. They've got a hive there, have they? It's not a hive, it's a nest. They've gone into that hole look, and they'll have built a... You've seen the wasp nest in... Yeah, look at well, the one. They've built it in there, so we've disturbed that nest. It's come through. They wouldn't have hacked it. They sting you like <laughs> Right, we're going to start going this way. Okay. Um, we saw a few deer, but they just, they just, it was so warm, deer just sort of disappeared into cover. You can't blame them really, feeding pretty much overnight. Um, so back for a, a breakfast and a bit of a chill before the evening session. Nature's harvest. Oh, it's dark. Beautiful. Black resist here, absolutely massive. The weather is unusually hot. In this it's in, in, it's, unbelievable, isn't we're it? We've seen animals, we've seen lots of females, seen the calves, and um, the big stags just aren't moving yet. There's nothing we can do. We've seen, I think yesterday evening was the best we've seen. Yeah. Maybe all kind of animals. Just a nice evening, a bit, bit cooler, a little bit cooler, aren't they? Just yeah, we are getting stalks in. I mean, we're getting opportunity, but not in the yet. Um, plan the season. I think we're better off hunting in the woodland, yeah, in the shade. All right, okay. I think that the big animals just just won't go onto farmland yet. Yeah, it's just way too early. I mean, like it was 19 degrees this morning. Uh, it was going to be really, really. I know hot. Yesterday morning at six o'clock it was 18 degrees. Yeah, which isn't. It's not like ideal for this kind of. It's not. It's not Irish September it's, weather. It's not Irish weather at all. No. <laughs> but um, it's early for rutting as well. That, that's not going to happen yet anyway. But I'm, I'm, I'm finding the same with the reds actually at home. In that they're just not moving. That they're much. not well. Young you, ones you, maybe. You've got. You've maybe got ten minutes as the light comes, yeah. and then they're in, and then they're not coming out till well after dark. And uh, just kind of line up. Yeah, it's the same anyway. this morning back down that clear Yeah, you could see them walking in. in. We're just going back in. Yeah, yeah. And have a nice talk, though. It's great. It's not raining. And the company isn't too bad either. Like it's already. Yeah, well, no, no, no. <laughs> I wait, I'm reserved judgment. <laughs> but yeah, we'll just keep cracking on. Great. See what we can do. Nice. Get some breakfast now and 
uh, I know Chris heading back to bed for an hour or two maybe. Yeah, never, never happened. Never happened. <laughs> I might get an hour. Maybe it's more. No, we just get some breakfast. I mean, I, you know, just keep, just keep hunting away. It's just nice to be out. Nice to be it out. It is nice to be Lovely out. Lovely part of the world. It is nice weather, like. I'm not going to complain over that, but it's not so much stalking weather for anyone. We had kind of a nice afternoon walking around the, the local village, um, had a nice lunch and then met Norman really probably a couple of hours before dark. plan was really to sit, we've got a nice spot overlooking the corner of a wood, uh, just who's deer and everything was perfect but just as we were getting into the golden hour as I call it, just that, that magic time before the light fading, the wind completely flipped on us uh, and completely turned so blowing us into the wood so we did, we did move, I was never, neither of us were comfortable about it because we're kind of walking down past the wood and you feel as though you're winding it but you know, we're faced with, with, with little alternative. We'd only got a bit of light left, so it was kind of a rapid charge across the field, really. We had a bit of cover with the hedgerow. Stop, well done. Enjoyed it. Bloody heat will kill you. <laughs> Cruel. Okay, so um, true to the last couple of days, uh, we kind of laid up just in a gorse hedge here. I took right in close, the wind's just coming up across us, and 
as a hedge line, a tree line, a ditch, deep ditch and brambles with a fir wood at the back of it. It's probably about 100, 120 yards from us to the corner. And just really waited and right at the death, almost, we could hardly see. And you could just pick out some deer starting to move and there's a bit of a gap in the, in the ditch where deer had obviously been tracking and using it as an entry to the field, a nice lush green field and seekers started to come out. And the stag's right on the edge of the, uh, tree line whipped round and shot back in and you know we can't we can't see anything now it's nearly dark so we're just giving it um, 10 or 15 minutes uh, and then we'll go forward and sort of search on the edge of the trees but it's going to be really tricky because it's nearly it's nearly pitch black um, anyway we'll see how we get on Yeah, good the team. Yeah, well done. Yeah, good. Thank your you very first, much. Your first seek of Irish safaris. Not your first seek, but your first one of us. Yeah. Right, we drag him out, we get a picture. Yeah. Yeah, some weight on that. Right, I just wanted to talk a little bit uh, about this, this Leica, um, Kalanux View, fairly new, um, sent to me by the guys at Scots Country International, so thanks very much for that. Really, they wanted me to have a look at it from a user point of view. Now, I'm not a specialist thermal night vision man. I do, I do no night shooting at all. Occasionally, occasionally I might go out for fox and that's it. Um, I've used thermals a little bit for, for deer counting, deer spotting. Uh, only dabbled so I'm by no means an expert I think this is what the guys wanted really from a practical point of view somebody that's actually out stalking uh, managing deer counting deer over restock sites and, and whether or not something like this was useful for, for you know to me probably had it now I don't know a week 10 days something like that what a fantastic piece of kit what I've done in a very sort of simple way is film some footage while I was out the other, the other morning really just having a look across some land close to home in Ayrshire um, they'd cut some barley and some wheat in a fairly big area um, and, and I wanted to check and have a look, A, see what the deer situation was but primarily look at foxes because often you can you can get foxes just after they've cut the, the corn crops. Um, so I've used it a little bit over a couple of nights there, quite warm nights, conditions I suppose are not ideal for a thermal really because you get a lot of false readings off warm you know, stones and rocks and wood absorbs the heat so you do get a lot of false readings but really this thing's just on another level from anything else I've looked at. Um, across the fields you can, you can easily identify rabbits, you can pick out hares, you've got deer and actually I got a, a rodeo and a kid um, feeding and then there's a smaller image just to the right of them which actually is a fox you can you can make that out clearly so one of the things I was really impressed is that for reasonably long ranges you're actually able to to do pretty accurate quarry identification with one of these won't ever replace getting the binoculars out and letting the light come up as far as deer is concerned but it did give me a real early indication of where animals were and the fox was feeding right next to a doe yes. and then I went on to shoot a few more clips a bit later on with deer around the field so I think you can actually just see how how clear the clarity of this is um, absolutely incredible the other thing that I need is something that's simple um, I need to wear reading glasses I can still see a deer at a thousand meters without anything but I, reading glasses I'm hopeless so I need something that's fairly easy to operate if I'm going to use it and you've basically got two control buttons, a menu button in the middle. It really, really simple piece of kit. And to record on it, you just basically press and hold a button and away you go. And bear in mind, this is not um, a technical spec, technical description. This is actually just somebody using one that's not had one in his hands before and getting out with the field with it and seeing what sort of benefit, if any, there was to me. Um, very, very simple to use. Super clarity, really good focus, simple menu. Um, you can download it, it's a doddle, plug it into the computer, we've downloaded it onto an SD card. So I'm incredibly, incredibly impressed with this. I know a few people have contacted me since they knew I got one and said, what are my, my thoughts on it? And my thoughts genuinely are that this is you know, proverbial dogs. This is good. Okay, folks, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks very much to our sponsors and in particular Norman for hosting us. Remember to like us on the social media platforms. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join. Looking after your sport 
and looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.